if anyone's gonna ask me what's your number one protein, I'm gonna say pork all the way. Everyone has a different preference, but we got a pig on the truck for a reason. Hi, my name is Gil Payumo. I'm co-owner and chef of Senior Sisi. Hey, I'm Evan Kadera. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Senior Sisi. Senior Sisi is a Filipino fusion food truck out here in the Bay Area, California. We fuse Filipino flavors, with Sisi being the main component, into burritos, nachos, rice plates, tacos. Of course, we started one truck. That was 2010. Now, you know, it seems like every year we kind of grew. You know, we do San Francisco style burritos, man. You have your starch, you have your protein, you have a sauce on it, and it's something easy to eat. And I kind of look at it like a battery pack, you know, like when you're just hungry as hell, you know, you get a burrito and just recharges you. So C-Sig traditionally is made out of pork's head, traditionally like the snout and the ears, and uh, it came from a province in the Philippines called Pampanga. Over the years, C-Sig has evolved, and so people do it in different ways, and what we do here, we use pork shoulder. So we're here at the commissary in the Bayview. The process over here is basically to cut it about a quarter inch. So I got a couple ingredients here. We have the vinegar, soy sauce, and we also have some of the pineapple juice. So we got salt over here and sugar, minced garlic, black pepper, and red chili flakes. You get different kind of flavors from the marinade, from the citrus taste, from the vinegar. You get the depth of the soy sauce and the saltiness. You get the spice of the red chili flakes and the garlic is gonna hit you after that. Even in the beginning, we didn't have a prep kitchen. I had my parents' house. And you know, you gotta start from somewhere. Day one, the marinating process was taking a pork shoulder, cutting it by hand. That's just a regular cutting board and a knife. And again, time consuming, inconsistency, and, and refrigerated uh, for 48 hours. And with this new process, we don't have to do the 48 hours. We could do it in a half an hour and you could do 300 pounds at one time. So I was born in San Francisco, but I was raised in Daly City. Daly City was predominantly Filipinos. My mom and dad decided to open up a Filipino convenience store, like kind of a mini mart. Pampanga is known as the culinary capital of the Philippines. So that's where the best food comes from, is what they say. So that's where his father and, and his ancestors are from. I was born, raised in San Francisco, and in my junior year, I transferred to a school in Delhi City. When I transferred there, Gil was one of the first people I met. Our families were both immigrants that came to this country and started their own businesses. And my dad came from Japan, and you know, first thing he did was become a chef out here. I'm, I'm half Japanese, half white, so I'm not even Filipino. A lot of folks think that we're both Filipino, and when yeah. they, they realize that we're not both Filipino, they're like, oh, I get it, you're Mexican, and he's <laughs> Filipino. Senor Sisig. I always love to eat, but I didn't have the passion to be a chef. You know, my dad would always try to teach me how to become a sushi chef. This is how you roll this. This is how you cut the fish. And I was, you know, I was interested, but not as interested as like, how much does this cost and how much are we selling it for? So we're gonna be taking that marinated pork. We're gonna be charbroiling in our charbroiler. So the reason why we want the char, we, we definitely want the smoky flavor in our meat, you know, almost like a barbecue flavor that balances out with the acidic sourness and spiciness of our meat. Our staff hand cuts all our meat that's been charbroiled. And you're talking about, you know, five to 600 pounds a day. We got all the, the pork seasick chop. Now there's a final marinade process. We're taking soy sauce, lemon juice, red chili flakes, and black pepper. This brings it back to life. All the sugar comes out from the soy sauce, which gives it another set of char on top of the charbroiling that we do. My dad always had that kind of interest to cook, even from the seasick recipe, which I got that seasick recipe from him. We were constantly making these for family parties, and this is something that was a treat for our family to have because they know, for one, it's labor intensive and, and it takes a lot of work to do, and we did it right. So I went through the whole California Culinary Academy here in San Francisco. I, I worked in the hotel and restaurant industry and kind of just trying to work my way up. Along this whole process, I was also doing music. You know, I was a rapper. That was another real big passion of mine. I think around 24 is when, you know, I was at my job for three years. My rap career was, you know, kind of just, you know, going okay, but not great. And, and I was like, look, I got to figure something else out. I, I use the analogy of like, you know, most people aren't ready to fight until somebody starts pushing you. The last 
mixtape or album I put out was called Quit Your Day Job. It's just about, if you don't have the passion for what you're doing, don't waste your life doing that. Quit all the things that you're wasting time with and move forward. We did a show in LA, um, and this was around 08, 09. Some folks in LA were talking about these Korean tacos. Oh, and I seen this truck and, it, and it, it said Kogi on it and it was like a Korean taco truck. There was a long line in the middle of the day which I've never seen before and I was like, that might be it. And I, so we, I jumped back into this minivan that was, had like eight of us in and I was like, guys, I might not be rapping anymore. I might like be done. You know, I just saw this truck and I'm going into food. I'm gonna start something. I remember going to Gil and, and the, the thing I asked him was, are you happy? He stopped and he thought about it and he was like, you know, like, Nah, not, not, not really. The biggest, I think, leap after, you know, working around the restaurants, working around hotels, and working my way up into a pretty good position to say, you know what, I want to stop that and open my own business and start a food truck. And they're like, what? What are you talking about? Even from my parents to my colleagues at, at the hotel I was working at the time was saying like, man, you're crazy. When I first bring the idea of doing Senor Seasick, we didn't even have the name at the point to Gil. You know, I was like, hey, let's do Japanese, Filipino, Korean, Chinese, all the, all the Asian tacos. We made the Seasick tacos first. That's the first thing because he already had the recipe. And once we kind of got that, we were like, yo, we don't need to do anything else. So I'm going to show you uh, one of our most popular items in our menu. It's the Senor Burrito. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is fry the egg. So when we throw the egg on any of the items, we call it salogit. So traditionally, salogit means an egg with garlic rice. It's a breakfast item, but in our menu, we get to throw it on anything you want. So once that cook in, I got a 12 inch tortilla over here. It's important for us to brown on each side because you want that, that burrito to be insulated with the heat and also have your, your tortilla fully warmed up. You want it gooey. See that little brown spot right there? It's gonna bubble up just a little bit. So first we have our adobo garlic rice, pinto beans. I think pinto is a lot neutral, you know, instead of black beans. So next we're gonna do our chicken sisig. Of course our original sisig is pork, but we also do a chicken version. We use fresh green jalapenos. Next we're gonna have, add some shredded lettuce with some purple cabbage mixture, pico de gallo, cilantro cream sauce. And lastly I'm gonna throw that egg where it really tops it off. So you see that oozing down. Then we're gonna take this and pull it over. So this is the Senor Sisig burrito, salogit with an egg, hella spicy. In, in the beginning, it was just me, Ev, and we would just run it. We'd run seven days a week and do as much market as we can. If it's like a morning and a, and a night, we're doing it. You know, we're just trying to get out there. After that first truck, it was like two trucks, and the, the next year it was like three trucks, and we kept on growing. Now we have six trucks. We have a restaurant here in San Francisco and Valencia. Always continue to grow and, and see what, what kind of, um, you know, what's ahead of us and keep on pushing. It's about 5.45 right now. We're in my backyard. I'm out here with my barber, Cream the Barber from Dog Pass Barbershop in San Francisco. I would see uh, Cream weekly. And then during the pandemic, when it started, I had to start learning how to cut at least my size myself. You know, you gotta get it where you can fit it, you know? <laughs> we out here. Well, I was born and raised in San Francisco. In 2015, I moved to Oakland. I had a kid, and we were kind of outgrowing our space in San Francisco, but at that time, San Francisco's rents were really starting to take off, and to get a reasonable space with bedrooms for a family in San Francisco at that time was almost impossible. And uh, leading up to the pandemic, you know, we were probably one of the most expensive places in America to live. It kind of feels similar in a way right now when it comes to the economy. It's because there was a, a little struggle in 2008 as well, so a lot of folks were kind of making transitions in their careers. Uh, which I feel like led up to a lot of street food as well. I really feel like street food is built for a pandemic. When I heard that there was a Filipino food truck, I was like, oh man, that's, I gotta go. And uh, it was a good thing because that's, that's part of my culture. Me being a Filipino, you know, growing up in the Bay Area, to see something like that compete with like the, the masses, you know, we're talking about culturally, it's a beautiful thing to see, so I love it. Oh man. Well, it's, it's, it's another day. It's another day back here. So it's Saturday today, it's the weekend. You know, it's one of our busiest days. We got about four trucks going out today. 
Um, and, you know, I expect Union City to be uh, pretty busy today. They, they always show out. The first time we went out there, you know, like 250 people came out to come support us. Man, there's nothing like this. There's nothing like it. I mean, it, it, it always gets me really pumped coming in. I mean, this is my, my home city, but like, look at that, man. It's a gorgeous city. At the beginning of our day, we load the trucks probably around 7 a.m. After that, we have cook start around 8.30, start setting up the truck, and after that, we're on the road. Then we get to the location around probably 9.15, 9.20. We open around 11 and serve to 5 p.m. Gotta do this horn before you leave. I was talking a little bit about Evan's creativity. He's not a cook and he doesn't cook as much, but he does have the vision of like being risky and trying different things. You know, he helped me out with that because I like to like be realistic with him, like saying like, you know, let's, let's try something different or let's stick to this kind of concept a little bit more. It kind of uh, aligns me and I just move forward after that. I don't even know where I'm parking, but I'm just gonna go in here and try not to get stuck. So right now we're doing pork seasick fries and I feel like it's a nice sharing dish or something for yourself. The fries are what sets it apart. First, we're gonna take our fries and put it in the basket. Again, these fries are lightly coated. I wish I had tongs, but they don't. Just have to barehand it. I got burns all over my hands. I think the reason why I got this sleeved up is because I got a fat ass burn here and I was like, hey, I'll just cover it with some, some roses. <laughs> That's cool, used to it. I mean, it's nacho cheese. You, know, you can't go wrong with nacho cheese, so we're gonna use the pork also in this. We're gonna hit it up with sour cream or the crema. Then we got some fresh guacamole. Next, I'm gonna go with the pickled jalapenos. This is a must if you have fries or, or nachos. Pico de gallo. And if people are asking for, hey, I want, I want a little bit more kick in it. I wanna throw a little bit more spice. Then that's when the fresh jalapenos come in. Also on top of the pickled jalapenos, I feel you need that freshness. There's so much flavor coming from the sea stick itself. You need kind of things to kind of tame it down in a good way. There you go, that's a pork sea stick fries. When we started the business, we got a lot of good feedback with the younger generation. People were excited about it. You know, I'm Filipino, yeah, I know sea stick. So people were identifying the dish, um, but of course, they're the elders. They were very stuck on something that was original or how people make it. And, and Filipinos are very kind of like, you know, I make this dish better. No, I make it the right way. With something like with food, it shows a lot to the younger generation. It's okay to speak your mind. It's okay to, to say what you believe. It's okay to do something that you're not told to do in a sense of a career-wise. When it came full circle for me was when I went to the Philippines, I think in 2017, and I was in Makati. I went to, I think it was a dive bar that that served, it was called like chupacabra or something like that. And they had seasick on the menu. And then down at the end of the menu, it said San Francisco style seasick. And we talked to the owner and the owner was like, yeah, we got this inspiration from a food truck in San Francisco. And we didn't say anything, but it was, it's like, we kind of knew. 